Hello everyone, welcome to Aryan Tutorials on Engineering Mechanics. In this video lecture, I am going to explain about power transmitted by a belt and the ratio of tensions in the belt. So, how to uh, derive an equation for power transmission and what is the equation and how to derive for the ratio of two tensions are going to take place, uh, two tensions are going to take place in tight side and slack side of the belt. Okay. So now take the example of simple open belt drive system here which is having a driver and driven pulley. So whenever uh, the rotation of the one pulley starts then it will try to take the belt uh, with it to transmit the rotational power to the another uh, pulley that is follower here. So when it starts automatically in the belt uh, the belt can face the tensions. So this is the above side is the slack side here. Okay, In this slack side uh, assume the tension is acting as t1 and similarly the tight side assume the tension is acting t2 so whenever it will start rotation automatically the belt can face certain tension inside it okay the tension direction takes place like this for slack side and, and tight side and when you compare these two the tension in the tight side is more than the tension in the slack side okay so for this again uh, uh, for finding the power transmission okay power transmitted by the belt uh, how can we give the equation so for that we try to consider the work done formula and we all know the work done formula which is equal to force into displacement we can write it as and from the same equation uh, by using the same equation the power is equal to we can write it as which is the work done per second so work done per second means we can write it as force into displacement divided by time okay displacement per time so automatically force into displacement means here work done per unit time that becomes equal to the power required okay so this displacement per time again we can write it as velocity that is the linear velocity of the belt uh, which we can find out with the help of the uh, n which is the speed okay by the formula pi dn by 60 we can find out the linear velocity here so finally we can write the equation as power is equal to we have to know the force what is the resultant force will be acting in the belt okay so why you are saying here resultant force means here the belt is facing two forces in the form of tensions okay tension in slack side tension in tight side okay so when you consider any one of the pulleys okay here consider a follower as example so when you consider this follower with respect to this follower what is the resultant force will be acting inside the belt means here that is the difference of these two tension forces why the difference means both are acting in opposite direction okay okay then we can write it as the resultant force as t2 minus t1 okay larger value minus smaller value okay it, uh, ultimately it will try to pull the belt so the resultant force may be the difference of these two forces that is those are tensions here okay so this t2 minus t1 into displacement per time we can write it as velocity okay this is the equation we can give for the power transmitted by the belt okay now so that is t2 minus t1 into velocity of the belt okay remember this formula next we go for finding the ratio of tensions in the belt okay already we said the two tensions are acting t1 and t2 so for these two tensions we can give a ratio here okay how we can give the ratio how can derive the derive that equation okay we'll learn here and uh, for that try to take the reference of the follower okay which is having two tensions t1 and t2 with respect to this follower sorry belt is having tensions t1 and t2 with respect to this uh, follower here and uh, for deriving the formula uh, before that uh, we try to draw the two lines where the belt is leaving the pulley okay so this angle is we can assume as a theta so this theta angle we can use it for uh, writing the equation for uh, ratio of tensions how by the formula you can uh, understand and this theta is called as your angle of contact okay this angle of contact can be written as for the open belt drive system as 180 minus 2 alpha okay alpha is the angle made by the belt okay and for cross belt drive we can write it as 180 uh, plus 2 alpha okay so this theta angle this is the open drive system for this uh, theta value we can find out with the help of the angle made by the belt uh, whenever you are adjusting over the two pulleys so that is alpha so here theta is equal to remember the formula is 180 minus 2 alpha okay because here one alpha it can maintain above the reference line or central line and below also it can maintain certain 
uh, reference uh, certain uh, line okay so the angle between that uh, vertical line and this uh, uh, line where the belt is leaving the pulley so that angle uh, can be alpha here so two times of the alpha this two times of the alpha we need to subtract from 180 then automatically we get the angle of contact theta okay assume the angle of contact is theta so for deriving the equation we try to assume uh, an arbitrary wedge shape here throughout the arc where it can cover the contact of the belt will take certain amount of that uh, curved shape of the belt uh, that is arbitrary wedge we can assume and with an angle of smaller angle delta theta okay so with respect to this arbitrary shape uh, we can assume that the tension acting at the contact point related to the uh, edge final side of the arbitrary wedge shape here that acts perpendicular to this wedge shape that is t we can assume in the slack set similarly in the tight side also to the same shape perpendicular to it we can assume t plus delta t why because the tight side tension is little bit more than the tension in the slack set so we can assume t here and here we can assume t plus delta t okay similarly whenever a particular part is moving over another object means it can face the friction and a normal reaction so here the friction will be acting perpendicular to the central line and the re reaction force acts normal to it okay these are the assumptions required for deriving the equation for the ratio of tensions in the bell drive okay next we go for the exact definition sorry exact derivation here okay so with the help of this diagram we can derive the equation and before going to the main steps try to uh, divide the tensions into two equal parts horizontal and vertical here this t and t plus delta t so take the reference of t okay which is acting at a particular angle with the vertical line so this uh, is inclined position so to this inclined position we can divide it into two components two rectangular components here okay here when you carefully observe this diagram this tension is perpendicular to this uh, arbitrary shape side and similarly when you draw a vertical line vertical line from the same point from where you have considered the t that vertical line will be perpendicular to the central line okay so it means here this t line and this vertical line these two are perpendicular to the wedge shape and the central line okay then it means the angle made by this half of the delta theta by 2 that is half of the delta theta can be equal to the angle between these two only okay carefully observe here from the theorem of right angle sorry from the theorem of perpendicular lines we can say that the angle made by this tension with respect to the vertical line will be equal to delta theta by 2 why it is delta theta by 2 means this central line is dividing this arbitrary shape into two equal parts so automatically here theta becomes delta theta becomes delta theta by 2 so that delta theta by 2 is obtained for the same tension force direction of the tension force with the vertical line so here we can write it as delta theta by 2 so with respect to this delta theta by 2 we can write the adjacent component as t cos delta theta by 2 and this component as t sin delta theta by 2 similarly take t plus delta t and this one also we can divide into two directions okay so based upon the perpendicular lines theorem this is perpendicular to this side of the arbitrary wedge shape and automatically vertical line will be perpendicular to the central line so then angle between this t plus delta t and the vertical line becomes equal to delta theta by 2 then again we can write the components as t plus delta t cos delta theta by 2 and similarly t plus delta t sin delta theta by 2 okay like this we can we can uh, resolve the tension in tight side and the slack side into two components with respect to the arbitrary uh, shape angle okay so now we go for the main derivation part we have to first consider the horizontal forces when you consider the horizontal forces here main horizontal force is normal reaction other than this normal reaction there is a horizontal component of t and again there is a horizontal component of t plus delta t okay these two are acting in the same direction and r is acting in opposite direction okay so then r is equal to we can write it as sum of these two horizontal components we can write it as t sin delta theta by 2 plus t plus delta t sin delta theta by 2 okay and again here as delta theta by 2 is very small then we can write sin delta theta by 2 is equal to delta theta by 2 in the form of radians okay and similarly substitute this delta theta by 2 in place of 
sin delta theta by 2 then automatically we get this equation okay and again here open the brackets here that will be equal to t into delta theta by 2 plus t into delta theta by 2 plus delta theta into delta theta by 2 so delta theta delta t both are smaller quantities when you multiply again it becomes very smaller quantity then it can be equal to 0 finally we can write the equation these are the two similar quantities 2 into t into delta theta by 2 then these two two will be getting cancelled then r is equal to will get t into delta t so assume this equation as 1 as a reference equation okay so from the horizontal forces we got this relation next we go for vertical forces when you consider the vertical forces here two components of the t and t plus delta t and one friction force okay here this uh, vertical component and the friction both are in same direction but this uh, vertical component uh, which is of t plus delta t is downward direction so we can write it as f plus t cos delta theta by 2 is equal to t plus delta t into cos theta by 2 again we know that delta theta by 2 is very small then automatically it can become 0 then cos 0 is equal to we can write it as 1 so keep this step again aside now substitute the relation in this equation then we can write it as f into t cos 0 means 1 then f plus t not f into f plus t is equal to again in place of cos delta theta by 2 we can write 1 only so it becomes a theta plus delta t then f is equal to we can write it as t plus delta t minus t then tt will be getting cancelled then f is equal to delta t already we know the frictional force is equal to mu into r coefficient of friction into normal reaction that is equal to again delta t in this equation again we can write r is equal to delta t by mu okay and assume this equation as uh, reference equation is 2 okay so by comparing these two equations first reference and second reference equation we can make these two equal so next we try to make the two equations equal t into delta t is equal to delta t by mu so when you take uh, this t to the right side we'll get 1 by t into delta t then when you take this mu to the left side that will be equal to again we can write as mu into delta t okay forgetting the required equation we need to integrate uh, in between t2 to t1 so when you integrate the equation you can write the equation as for this t2 to t1 this one for delta t we can write it as 0 to theta okay when you integrate 1 by x will get log t in between t2 to t1 and that is equal to delta theta means theta in between 0 to theta into mu okay we can write it as again this equation log t1 minus log t2 is equal to 0 to theta means directly we can write it as theta into mu okay log a minus log b it is in the form of log a minus log b then we can write the equation as log a by b means t1 by t2 is equal to we can write it as theta mu so again we can modify log base e t1 by t2 is equal to mu theta then t1 by t2 is equal to we can write it as e power mu theta okay this is the required equation for the ratio of two tensions okay by considering the arbitrary wedge shape with the help of angle of contact then we can derive the equation for the ratio of two tensions in the belt that is in slack side and the tight side okay the equation remember t tau sorry t1 by t2 is equal to e power mu theta so i hope you understand the simple uh, derivation part for uh, deriving the equation uh, power as well as the ratio of tensions in the belt drive and if you don't understand please feel free to give a comment to my video and uh, please subscribe and share my videos with your friends and once again thanks for watching my video thank you all